Okay. Thank you, Shantiat.
就差不多到这。Hi, Ellen. Could you hear me? Yes, yes. Morning, morning. Hi, I can hear you. Meet you again. Yeah, yeah. I can hear you clearly. <laughs> good. Good, good. Hi, Ben Tong. Hey, how are you doing, Prof? Oh, hi, Pat Zaina. Nice Hello. to meet you. Morning, Pat Zaina. Morning, Prof Eileen. Apa khabar? Baik, baik. Very good. Good, good. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to find that's a background. <laughs> I couldn't find it. <laughs> And this background, pun I mean, that I I I ask for Mengzi, you know, because of, uh, uh, good morning, everybody. Hey, good morning, Prof. Oki. Hi, Prof. Oki. Okay. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> So, how is the what do you call uh, the the list of the speaker, right? So we start from uh, from uh, you, yeah, from yeah, from yeah, you, yeah. and then Professor Oki, and then mm -hmm. Dr. Krishnan, and Pro, uh, Dr. Ji Jiang, and Professor Yuan. Yeah, five speaker, right? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. See, uh, according to the agenda, yes, uh, we have uh, four invited folks. Oh. Uh, yes, the uh, uh, Oki, Paoki, and uh, Edin, and Rinche, and myself, right? All three of you. Yeah, yeah. four. Yeah. And uh, and uh, and uh, there are other three mini talks uh, okay. from Mr. Uh, Christian, Christian. And, uh, yeah, Jie Zhang and uh, and the uh, Yunquan Yuan. Okay. It is a mini talk. Yeah. Um. Uh. Professor Fang Ya. Uh. Fan Wang. Just yeah, to confirm, yeah. the mini talk we have two speaker or three speakers. Uh, three three speakers. For the mini talk. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, Prof. Uh, Fang Wang, can you repeat it again? The speaker. Ah, uh, yeah. The uh, invited speaker is uh, 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 the uh, the first is uh, is me, and the yes. second is uh, uh, Oki. Yes. Uh, third is Erin and uh, Jin Cheng. Jin Cheng. Jin. Ren Cheng. Ren Cheng Yu. Ren Cheng Yu, yeah, yeah. Ren yeah. Cheng Yu, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. So the Yong Guan, uh, Yang, uh, Yang Yu. Guan Yuang is the, Yu. for the mini talk, right? Yeah, yeah, yes. Okay. The last one. Okay. Yeah. I got it, yeah. Okay. Um, okay, shall we start? Uh, 
Hold on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Oke, okay. Prof. Anwar, uh, Profesor Yu, ya. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, the speaker, I can I repeat again? First, uh, Prof. Anwar, and then uh, Prof. Oki, yeah. and then uh, Prof. Aileen, yes. yes, and then number four, uh, Prof. Uh, you, yes, yeah, Trencheng, you, yes, yeah, one, two, three, four, and then the three minute, three minute speaker is uh, Krishnan, Jinjang, and Yong Kuan, yeah, yeah. yes. Oke. Okay. Yes, we can start. Oke, okay, thank you. So, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is uh, Fan Wang from Institute of Oceanology, Chinese Academy of Sciences. On behalf of the organizing committee and the program committee, I'm happy to welcome your participation in Decade Action uh, Incubator 8, unlock, unlocks the mysteries and the opportunities of marine biodiversity in the Indo-Pacific Convergence Center. The integrated in the investigation in Indo-Pacific Convergence Center, marine ecosystem and biodiversity, short for Triple IPCC MEP, initiative was firstly proposed at the regional consultative and planning workshop towards the UN Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development for the North Pacific and Western Pacific Marginal Sea in 2019, Tokyo, to identify the priority issues on marine ecosystem and the biodiversity rich in the IPCC area and develop a solution to reverse the deterioration of the marine biodiversity from multi-layer and multidisciplinary perspectives. With the support of IOC Westpac, a triple IPCC MEB working group was formally established in April this year to strengthen the regional collaboration and develop the programs. The AOCAS, CMAX USM, and the RCO Brain want to jointly propose the unlock the mysteries and opportunities of marine biodiversity in IPCC area side event to dissemination, uh, to disseminate the concept of triple IPCC MEB initiative and engage the uh, society in this region for further collaboration. This side event will provide a platform for promoting the co-design process of triple IPCC program amongst ocean science community, uh, policymakers, uh, private sectors, and civil society towards the identification and the development of science-based solution to protect and preserve the uh, marine biodiversity in this region. And today, we are honored to have invited the professors and various stakeholders to attend this site event. Firstly, Let's warmly welcome Mr. Wen Tao Wang from the Administrative Center for China's Agenda 21st, Ministry of Science Technology of China, deliver his opening speech. Please, Wen Tao. Okay, thank, uh, thank you, Dr. Wang Fan. Uh, distinguished Dr. Wang Fan, Dr. Zhang Arifin, Dr. Uh, Alin Tan. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. 
Today is a great honor for me to participate in this incubator eight, the Indo-Pacific uh, com uh, Convergent Center on behalf of the uh, Administrative Center for China's Agenda 21, Ministry of Science and Technology. I would like to express my uh, sincere gratitude to the organizer, the Institute of uh, Oceanology, Chinese Academy of Science, and also my great thanks to all the online uh, participants. As a, uh, a once-in-lifetime opportunity, UN Decade aims to lead a revolution in ocean technology and the global ocean governance. Three goals and seven outcomes have been proposed. I noticed that the slogan of this kickoff meeting for the Western Pacific is to join the collective global movement, engage with various stakeholders in this region, and develop, develop ocean science solutions for the ocean we want, which I think fits very well with the goals of the UN decades. Indo-Pacific region is deeply influenced by many uh, oceanic, atmospheric, and uh, geological systems. So far as I know, Indo-Pacific Con Convergent Center is uh, uh, recognized as the global center of marine biodiversity. Many scientific issues uh, uh, associated with the bio biodiversity center, however, have not yet been explored including species and uh, geographic uh, distribution patterns, a region and uh, uh, evolution of marine organisms, diffusion regularity and driving factors, and so on. As stakeholders in the Indo-Pacific region, how to reverse the trend of ocean health decline, how to protect marine biodiversity, and how to uh, rationally use marine resources, we need to give scientific answers and make more research works. Uh, our center acts as a pioneer and a driving force for pushing China toward a sustainable development. During the 14, 14th five-year five plan, the budget managed by our center for R&D in ocean and polar field has reached more than 6 billion Chinese yuan, which carry most of the SDG 14 uh, targets like reduce ocean pollution, uh, eutrophication, uh, ocean acidification, overfishing, ocean prediction, ecosystem health, and so on. ACA 21 also have more than 40 uh, cooperative partners from all over the world in the fields of climate change, uh, ocean and polar science. Uh, we uh, take the lead of the BRICS countries working group on the ocean and the polar fields actively participate in the IPCC, IODP, the Arctic Circle, and other cooperation in this field. Our center fully supports the UN Decade Actions, activities, and all, and all uh, incubator works. In this incubator eight, it's great to see that scientists from Indonesia, Malaysia, Sri Lanka, and China are working together to focus on the marine biodiversity in the Indo-Pacific Convergent Center. Scientists research on different aspects from climate change, chemical perspective to protection and the design international program. I wish the Incubator 8 a big success and wish our international scientific team discovers the marine biodiversity mysteries and sees the great opportunity to develop more collaborative activities. Uh, that's all, thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Thanks for Winter's speech. So next, uh, please welcome Ms. Dong Yao Wang from Bureau of International Cooperation, Chinese Academy of Sciences. Dong Yao, please. Yes, hi. Thank you, Professor Wang. Long time no see. So dear <laughs> colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I'm Dong Yao Wang from the Bureau of International Cooperation of Chinese Academy of Sciences. It's my great honor to be invited to participate in this meeting. As you know, the ocean is crucial to all the life on Earth and the prosperity of human society. In the past decades, human activities brought huge stress to the ocean, which caused obvious degradation of marine environment and adversely affected the, the, marine, uh, the marine ecosystem. As one of the national academies in the region, 
the Chinese Academy of Sciences has always attached great importance to the study on the sustainable development and protection of the, hum the marine environment, and always highlighted the importance of in the international communication and the cooperation to tackle this transboundary and interdisciplinary challenge. Nowadays, the scientists from different countries have established extensive collaboration and achieved many valuable uh, results. I think the IPPCC-MEB initiative is one of them, which proposes a very practical and inspiring action plan. I know Professor Yu will give more details about it later. I wish this in initiative will attract more stakeholders and scientists from the, the different countries to work together along with the Chinese Academy of Sciences. Through the joint efforts of all the parties, we will make greater uh, contribution to the UN decade of ocean science for sustainable development. I wish the meeting a great success. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dongyang. And uh, according to the uh, request of uh, the uh, kickoff conference, uh, we should take a group photo. And could you please uh, open your camera? All right, everyone is ready. All right. Okay. One, two, three. Smile. Yeah. Okay. Another page. We have quite participants today. One, two, three. Thank you so much. Okay. Wonderful. So, thank you very much. And uh, now, according to our agenda, mm -hmm. I will give my uh, the, the, the host right to to part Senna, please. Now you you you, you I'll, I'll, I'll move. yeah please. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Wan, uh, for handing me uh, to chair uh, this sixty minute. Uh, presentation or discussion later on. Uh, so the first uh, speaker uh, today uh, will be uh, Professor Fan Wang from uh, Institute of Oceanology, China Academy of Science. So he is a director of the Institute of Oceanology, uh, China Academy of Science, and uh, Yantai Institute of Coastal Zone Research. He is also Dean of Marine Science College, University of China Academy of Science. So for the next 15 minutes, uh, Professor Wang will present uh, the talk on climate change impact on marine biodiversity in the IPCC area. So, uh, the time is yours, Professor Wang. Okay, thank you. Let's uh, share my screen. Uh, could you see? Could you see it? Yes, it's clear. But could you could you please use? Uh... Right. Okay, that's good. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, Pazena. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, today I would uh, talk about the uh, multi-layer or multi-sphere interactions in the Indo-Pacific Convergence Center of uh, matter and energy, especially the climate change impact to marine biodiversity. Uh, my talk uh, includes four parts. The first one is about the background and the significance. The Indo-Pacific Convergence Center, located in or between the Pacific and the Indian Oceans, 
and there is uh, the Indo-Pacific warm pool as a thermal center of ocean. And there is a very strong advection center in the atmosphere over the warm pool. And there are three plates uh, converging to this area. And finally, there is a biodiversity center uh, over the whole uh, the, the global ocean, even the, the whole globe. So there are uh, material energy convergence centers of the four layers of the Earth system. The interaction between layers and the oceans is extremely complex and intense. So this area study gives us an ideal window uh, or insights into the processes of multi-layer interactions. And the comprehensive study in this area has a multiply overlapped significance through close layer, cross scale, and across disciplinary investigations. About climate change and prediction, the ocean and the atmosphere convergence center uh, was formed, is formed uh, by the full coupling between ocean and the atmosphere. However, there's a enormous gap in the cognition of the ocean processes. Meanwhile, as the, the heat source of the global thermal healing grid conveyor belt, the mechanism and effects has really been explored comparing to the cold source in North Atlantic Ocean. About the plate theory and the earthquake prevention and disaster reduction, uh, there are uh, lots of subduction zones uh, with different stages uh, as natural lab for studying the initiation of plate subduction. And plate subduction triggers deep cycle of energy, energy and material uh, among the, uh, uh, the, the, the solid earth, the ocean, and even atmosphere. And the plate convergence causes frequent volcanoes and earthquakes in this area. So the study will offer us a key to solve the mystery of initiation uh, mechanism of plate subduction and assess monogenic uh, mechanism. And about biodiversity and the resource conservation and utilization, uh, this area hold about 76% reef building coral, 75% mangrove, 58% mollusk, 45% uh, seaweed, and 37% coral reef fish species uh, among the uh, global ocean. And uh, as a tectonic place shift and warm pool involved, the diversity center shifted several times in several historic period. And between the glacial and interglacial period, the diversity pattern uh, adjusted meridionally, and at present, the distribution pattern of modern biodiversity is closely related to the sea surface temperature and the circulation. So the climatic, environmental, and biological relationships is crucial to solve the mystery of the formation and evolution of the biodiversity center and lay the scientific foundation for diversity conservation and sustainable utilization of resources. The second part is about the uh, scientific issues and challenges we will face, in, we will face to. Uh, the first issue is what are the coupled ocean atmosphere dynamic processes and their influence in transport of biogenic elements, including the key horizontal transport and exchange process between oceans given the very complex terrain. The key vertical transport and exchange processes between the upper and the deep ocean and the mechanism of convergence and generation uh, elimination of uh, biogenic elements. The key factor uh, we should consider uh, includes uh, uh, terrigenous input, atmospheric deposition, 
and um, oceanic vertical exchange, especially the migration of transformations of biogenic elements between uh, environment and uh, uh, organisms. The second issue is what are the initial mechanism and process of plate subduction and its influence uh, of the, uh, on the formation and evolution and uh, the warm pool and, uh, and firstly, the uh, center of uh, marine biodiversity. And the third one is what is the multi-layer interaction uh, mechanisms for the formation and evolution of the center of biodiversity. As we all know, uh, there have been several different hypotheses of the center formation, uh, but uh, they are unclear and even controversial. Is there um, a, a union mechanism or is there a wireless, marine wireless line? And the uh, previous studies have uh, mainly taken into account the organisms themselves. Well, the relationship between the complex environment and the organism uh, has, has not sufficient considered uh, so far. The impacts of ocean atmosphere and solid environment on biodiversity are complex and paradoxical. For example, the biodiversity was consistent well with the macro pattern of physical environment. However, it was quite different from that of biogenic elements and the primary production. And water exchange between two oceans owns a dual effect on connectivity and isolation of the regional species. The Indo-Pacific warm pool conditions or a triangle, a coral breaching uh, occurs under global warming as many studies show. And in the future, how will diversity centers involve and how will the ecological function change? Is there a source sink relationship between deep sea biodiversity and shadow sea? How to shape habitats in deep sea extreme e environment? And the fourth issue is about the long term impact of biodiversity on marine ecological environment and its <clears throat> habitability. The coral reef system maintains specific uh, biodiversity. Well, the coral breaching would dramatically reduce the biodiversity. And uh, as some studies show, by uh, 2100, the coral reef ecosystem would uh, possibly become the first disappearing ecosystem on the earth. So the coral biodiversity and the evolution mechanism of its eco uh, ecological function uh, still need further study. And the di different biotas uh, possess vital ecological functions respectively uh, which could uh, result in the changes of ecosystem structure and uh, function. So what are the ecological effects caused by changes in the typical biota in this area? Uh, to address the above scientific issue, we have to uh, address some challenges, uh, such as a lack of basic data, limited field investigation and uh, insufficient simulation capability. So there are urgent needs to introduce new methods and means and to carry out international cooperation. So th the third part uh, is the goals and the perspective uh, for future cooperation. And uh, through the international cooperation, we try to build the international sharing platform, including the multi-layer 
integrated observation system in this area, the ocean environmental, biological, ecological, coupled model, data management platform, and artificial intelligent data products, and the international program, the uh, uh, triple IPCC. And uh, we have some uh, uh, very uh, potential solution for our future work. The first one is for artificial intelligence, uh, which can offer the new means for in information uh, mining and uh, intelligent analysis. Uh, because the AI technology owns powerful data mining and the nonlinear characterization abilities. And also, the uh, uh, environmental uh, DNA is a very useful uh, tool for us because it is rapidly developed in the past several years with unique performance and bright prospect. However, there are only 10% of research results uh, related to the ocean among the total environment science. And up to uh, now, uh, only three paper focusing coral reef in this area have been achieved. So it will strongly support the systematic research of biodiversity, not only in this area, but also in other oceans and seas. And uh, uh, the, uh, the other thing, uh, uh, the most important thing is uh, the international cooperation. The, uh, uh, some scientists uh, actively uh, involved in your decade uh, of ocean science for sustainable development and a working group head by Ellen, Jenna and me was established, established with pro approval of the IOC VESPEC to promote the triple RPCC. So a new international program is on the horizon vividly. Finally, I would summarize my talk. Focusing on the climate environment organism interaction, we will organize the international cooperative study through the cross layer, across uh, ocean, cross disciplinary and cross scale uh, study to understand co-evolution mechanism of uh, uh, multi-layer, especially the biodiversity center and the mechanism of uh, material energy exchange among them. And this area uh, has uh, so many frontier issues, big challenges and huge innovation uh, potentiality. So thank you for your attention and welcome to join us. Thank you, that's all. Thank you, uh, Prof. Fan Wang, for your uh, presentation. I think we uh, very uh, exact time. Yeah, so we still have uh, around two uh, uh, two minute uh, time left. But for of uh, for all of you who has a question, please hold on uh, your question uh, until the end of this uh, discussion. So I will move to the next uh, uh, speaker. Uh, the next speaker is Professor Oki Karnarajasa. Uh, he is from Indonesia. Uh, he will uh, talk on issue related to biodiversity. Uh, the title is on uh, From Marine Biodiversity to Chemical Biodiversity an eco an eco biotechnological perspective. Uh, Professor Oki uh, is head of research organization of Earth Science at National Research and Innovation Agency. It used to be Indonesian Institute of Sciences. So his expertise is uh, microbiology and biotechnology. So he led uh, four research center uh, currently. So we will have a uh, 15 minute Prof. Oki uh, to present your uh, idea and 
idea and a solution for what uh, Professor Fan Wang uh, stated uh, earlier. Please, uh, your time uh, now. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Prof. Sainal. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to briefly uh, talk about from marine bio biodiversity to chemical diversity and eco-biotechnological perspective. Uh, Indonesia is uh, regarded as the one of the mega biodiversity country and has been known as a <coughs> marine biodiversity hotspot. We are lucky enough to have a different uh, diverse coastal ecosystem, such as a coral reef, representing 14% of the world's coral reef, and then uh, <coughs> mangrove, 23%, and also sick. As we all know that uh, biological diversity means uh, chemical diversity. So by maintaining our biological diversity, basically we will be able to also maintain our chemical diversity, which is also important for us, uh, especially to support our uh, life as well, our health. And when we talk about the uh, development of uh, not marine natural product chemistry, especially, we need also to consider about the uh, science of biology, which is known as a marine chemical ecology. It is, that means uh, an interaction uh, between uh, microorganism and environments through chemical interaction. That means there is no physical interaction in this matter. So, I consider that this marine chemical ecology is quite immature in our region, and there is a need to strengthen our understanding on the marine chemical ecology to support our development on marine natural product chemistry that are useful for industry, medicine, and agriculture, etc. So basically, uh, there is a need to strengthen our capacity on this matter. When we talk about from marine natural product, especially from marine biodiversity, so we will talk about our benefits, not only for human, but also for ecosystem health. That means we have to maintain also our ecosystem for the future generation. There are at least three uh, big themes regarding uh, this topic. Number one is uh, biodiversity itself. It could be from marine habitats or marine microbe or their phylogeny. And secondly is chemo diversity and biological function. That is a, that very much interesting for us in order to study some basic understanding how this uh, uh, active azulat, for example, will produce certain products that are benefit for ourselves. The third one is a biotechnological and application. We can talk about the genomic biotechnological production as well as our products such as antibiotics and anti cancer. This is an example of uh, Indonesian marine diversity as a bioactive compound has been reported. As you can see here, it's very diverse function from cytotoxic, anti cancer, anti secticidal, and then anti tumor, cytostatic and then alzheimer antioxidant cystic and algacidal and antifungal and you can see here from the uh, map that most of our bioactive compound mostly come from the central and the eastern part of indonesia and it is very much related to the level of biodiversity in this region especially in the central and the, uh, eastern part of indonesia When we talk about the development of marine natural product, we talk also about the supply problem in the initial step of drug discovery. This is very much true, especially when we are talking about the preclinical as well as clinical trial for the commercialization. It is well known, understood that the marine natural product is 
quite complex structure, sometimes it is not feasible for the synthesis. On the other hand, our option on uh, aquaculture either in situ or uh, ex situ also sometimes is support the growth of the producing organism, but the true bioactive compound do not produce. That's another challenge for the aquaculture. And lastly is the development of a marine microbiology or marine biotechnology, especially through the uh, sustainable fermentation of uh, microbes that are associated with uh, uh, host uh, organism. So this will offer no recollection and possibility, but on, on, on other way, it also represent our difficulty in terms of culturing the marine microbe because so far, based on our uh, technique and media, only 1% of the marine microbe has been successfully cultivated. Now there is another uh, phenomena that represent chemical interaction between the host microorganism and their associated microbe, which is well known as a microbial symbiont. So in certain uh, invertebrate, we have what we call it high microbial abundance invertebrate. As you can see here, about 40 to 60% of their biomass are represented or, or occupied by their associated microbe. So by doing isolating and screening of this potential microbe, we will be able to have uh, alternative for searching for the marine natural product from uh, reef invertebrate, invertebrate, for example. Ah, the symbiotic microbe are the true of a natural product. There are, I can see you here, uh, I can show you here uh, at least, there are two accumulating evidences that indicating that uh, bacterial symbiont are the true producer of the uh, natural product. In this regard, Bugula neritina that produce bryosatin A, when their larvae treated by antibiotic, this uh, Bugula neritina was not able to produce the bryosatin A. So there is an independent uh, interaction between the bacterial symbiont and uh, our uh, host microorganism. Of course, this will represent another challenge for um, marine chemical ecology, especially for uh, clarifying how this uh, microbe and their host micro uh, and their host microorganism are interacting. Uh, Indonesia, besides having such very productive coastal ecosystem, indeed we have uh, several. Uh, deep sea water, as you can see here from Bandasi area, it has the deepest part uh, up to 7,700 meters. That means this represents another the untapped biodiversity from the deep sea uh, environment. And we have some difficulties, of course, for collecting and uh, isolating the microbe or macro, but there is another. Uh, study that representing the potential as mentioned by Professor Wang, the study of uh, environmental pool DNA, especially by using the marine metagenomic, as you can see here, there is no single dot representing uh, the study of metagenomic, marine metagenomic from Indonesia, despite the fact that there is a, uh, an increase on the use of metagenomic. This Portal is uh, was online in 2017 until now and maintained by the Center for Bioinformatics, the UIT, the Arctic University of Norway. And you can see here there are several uh, use of um, metagenomic study, especially for in a range of scientific and industry application from monitoring pollution and recycling water system, bioprospecting, and also disease surveillance and 
development of functional feed for aquaculture. Now the, there is a possibility to explore deep sea Indonesia using metagenomic and synthetic biology approach. So basically our study here will depend on the functional metagenomic data from the environmental pool DNA. And we use uh, synthetic biology, which is very much really on uh, biopart, uh, a sequence of uh, DNA that uh, represent functionalities of certain function. So in this regard, uh, we can use uh, different part of uh, gene from functional metagenomic data to establish and to construct certain interchangeable biopart in order to uh, build up a genetic circuit based on different biopart from metagenomic study so that it can be used to produce a high value compound. And uh, for general strategies for mining biopart from deep sea, at least we can use two different approaches. Number one is the whole genome shotgun sequencing is performed uh, for environmental pool DNA sample for gene and species discovery. And secondly, we can uh, uh, chop the DNA fragment, then will be cloned with plasmid, which has green and red fluorescent protein, then it will transform into E. coli. So basically we will be able to screening the E. coli and then using cell sorter and potential colony can be uh, further analysis and pick up to be compared with the uh, sequence that we obtain from uh, whole genome sequencing. Synthetic biology approach for uh, high value compound, especially from marine and deep sea, can also be conducted by uh, DBT cycle, which means design, build, test, and uh, learn cycle to obtain the base assembly to express gene in the pathway and produce desired product in different form. And we are now at the uh, National Research and Innovation Agency currently also uh, uh, constructing new building for uh, facilities regarding the biodiversity that can be used as a scientific hub for biodiversity research and collaboration in the field of biology, including uh, marine microbiology. So hopefully by 2020, we will be able to complete. So as mentioned by Professor Wang, we are also uh, launching a global platform, including for biodiversity. So hopefully this will also uh, allow our international partner to be able to join our initiative. Two minute more, Pat. Yeah, this is the final slide. We are also uh, just constructed national fleet management unit that will also uh, support our marine and deep sea research. And as concluding remark, much of nature tracer truth of small molecule in Indonesian water remain to be explored, particularly from marine and microbial diversity to fulfill the human needs. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Uh, thank you, uh, Prof. Oki. Uh, it's uh, an excellent uh, talk, I think. Uh, pa Oki uh, presenting uh, a topic on marine biodiversity from eco biotechnology perspective. So we move to Malaysia now. So we will invite a Professor Eileen Tan. Uh, she will present topic on empowering the public in biodiversity protection. Uh, Professor Eileen uh, Tan is a director of Center for Marine and Coastal Studies uh, at the University Science Malaysia. So his research, uh, her research interest is on 
isu related with marine biodiversity, aquaculture, and uh, also related with the human uh, activities. So, Professor Eileen, uh, you have a 50 minutes presentation. Uh, please, uh, floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Pak Zaina. Can you see my slides now? Yes, indeed. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Good morning and good day to all or the uh, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are. Um, what I'm sharing today, uh, this morning, would be slightly different from what been shared by Professor Fang Wan and Prof. Okay, this is very much science-based, talking about the, the whole uh, triple I, PCC, and also on chemistry, biodiversity. Mine is more on how do we actually involve the public in biodiversity protection. Um, the last decade of the 20th century was the first time a sense of urgency about the global scale degradation of natural habitats and the resultant threats uh, to potentially millions of species galvanized an effort to both study and conserve was at risk. The obvious question is, why has a massive international effort to deal with the biodiversity crisis still fail to launch? You know, why is it still fail to launch? You know, um, are the scientists not doing enough or, or, or the government not doing enough? The power of people is well demonstrated as a primary force to protect our biodiversity, the power of the people. But how do we translate all the science that has been generated in the institution, in the higher learning institution to the public for their understanding and to get them involved in playing a role in, in, in uh, biodiversity protection. When we talk about richness, many would think about dollar and cents without much focus on our vast ocean heritage and translating our ocean heritage to our wealth. Why is biodiversity important to us? You know, um, uh, I, I, I know most of us would already know because we are all from the scientific background. I'm trying to bring this matter out for the benefit of those who are not from the scientific background. You know, biodiversity provides to our economy, provides life ecological support, supports recreation, cultural and scientific needs. Biodiversity represents a wealth of systematic ecological data that helps us to understand the natural world and its origin. This, this importance, this facts is well known to us, but this is not well known to the general public, especially to the communities themselves. So biodiversity not only supports giving us the advantage that's been shared earlier, but it actually supports our economies and enhances our well-being, the human well-being, and has the potential to do even more. The five main roles of biodiversity to human well-being, you know, some of it has been shared by uh, Prof Oki earlier on. Biodiversity ensures health and food security, like what we are moving to forward now with the blue food. Uh, agenda and biodiversity helps fight diseases like for example the pharmaceutical pharmaceutical products biodiversity benefits business businesses for example food seafood and tourism and biodiversity provides livelihood the value for example value from ecosystem services and biodiversity protects us such as nature-based solutions that buffer us from natural disaster such as floods and storms. As ecosystems are increasingly threatened by human activity, acknowledging the benefits of biodiversity is the first step in ensuring that we look after it. We know biodiversity matters. Now as a society, we should provide, protect it. And in doing so, protect our own long-term interests. This slide shows the global distribution of cumulative environmental impacts. 
um, um, no, no, sorry. This slide show the marine hotspots of the world with the highest marine biodiversity hotspot concentrating at the Western Pacific region. The, a similar study has been shown, also has been shared by Professor Fang Wang earlier. But you compare with this slide, this slide shows the global distribution of cumulative environmental impacts with highlights of high cumulative impact index also around the Western Pacific region. This is indeed a worrying coincidence due to the biodiversity loss, added impacts from climate change and anthropogenic factors. You know, we are rich and yet, you know, this area, the Western Pacific area, is also subject to very high impact of, of uh, stresses. But biodiversity is critically important to our health, to our safety, and probably to our business or livelihood. But biodiversity, the, bi the diversity within species, uh, between species of an ecosystem, is declining globally faster than any other time in human history. This slide shows the primary drivers of biodiversity loss, which includes habitat loss, invasive species, overexploitation, pollution, and climate change associated with global warming. The influencer are human population growth. You know, human population growth are increasing rapidly also, increasing consumption and reduced resource efficiency. To engage people in environmental issues such as the biodiversity crisis, one has to inspire a connection with nature. That linkage should be built from a clear and compelling message about the importance of biodiversity and what we risk in depleting it. Sir David Attenborough, the famous naturalist, has quoted, no one will protect what they don't care about and no one will care about what they don't they have never experienced. This is very important for us to, to keep in mind because when we talk to the community, this is something we must understand. You know, at the moment, the community do not really understand what is biodiversity is all about. In a study done by Monitor of Engagement with the Natural Environment uh, in year 2018 and 2019, yeah, the survey found that around 90% of the adults in UK, yeah, we have not done such study in our region. So I'm, I'm using the, the, the template, the, the, the example from UK. The adults in UK do, do understand and concern about the natural environment. If you look at this, you know, when, when it comes to uh, natural disaster, they do have actions, they do have um, uh, uh, activities. But when, as it goes, you know, the understanding is there, the knowledge is there. As it goes to how much being contributed by households' actions, you can see a drastic drop from 74%, which is involving cycling. You know, our, our community also understand and it reduce the, the carbon em emission. They do cycles, the population, do, the community do cycle around. But when it comes to more other things, yeah, more other things, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, expecting the, the each household to take action, it actually drops. And when we look at it into conservation action, into volunteerism, into actual practice, it actually only goes down to 4%, who is actually, you know, in the general public, who is actually involving in conservation action. This is, this is a reflection. This is a reflection of the value action gap, showing the gap between what people say and what people do. Many of us are very good in saying things. We know and we explain it. But how many of us, you know, really go down to the ground and do what we believe in and what we understand? You know, that is a huge gap, you know, from what from the earlier slides, from 94% to really action is only 4%. So what what is you know what is our vision for biodiversity? You know we want broken ecosystems to be restored, missing biodiversity to be returned. We want people to benefit from a healthy ocean, and most of all, we want more people on the nature side 
and more space for biodiversity to thrive. There are three main st delivery strategies. First is do it ourselves. You know, each and each of us will have to do it ourselves. Secondly, is to guide and support others. And thirdly, influence change and inspire action. I mean, as a scientist, we are not just doing science. Now we are more talking about how do we translate our knowledge, our findings into good use, into empowering the community, the public, into making them be involved and playing a role also in protecting our marine biodiversity or even biodiversity in general. In general, many of us know what are the right things to do, but commonly, yeah, people want to fit in what most people do and what should be done. We need social influencer yeah, to empower the public. Without the social influencer, the knowledge is there, the understanding is there, but then business will be as usual yeah, without the social influencer. The public, we have to have the social influencer to empower the public for protection of biodiversity, to create a sustainable behavior. Then only we can achieve, we can map our roadmap to sustainable change. To empower the public, we need to discuss or make them involved by discussing issues that are impacting their livelihood. We need to empower the public to take action and to take charge of their own environment. Issues that impacting the livelihood, such as fish kills, yeah, affecting the livelihood of fish farmers. Issues such as plastic pollution, impacting the livelihoods, environment, and organisms that we care for, yeah, like the endangered uh, species. Issues that touches the hearts of the public, such as this endangered species being caught in the abundant fishing nets, you know. Pictures like this actually can give a lot of impacts. To engage people in biodiversity and other environmental issues, one must provide the opportunity for enhanced understanding that empowers individuals to make choices and to take action based on sound science and reliable recommendations. We have to use our, our findings, our data, to actually translate that to the understanding of laymen, understanding of the public. We must encourage behavioral change for biodiversity among the public. The approaches to be taken are motivate the change, socialize the change, and ease the change. The, the social influencer, it can be from the scientists. You know, we have to come out from our comfort zone, from the ivory tower, and share what's been shared, you know, in platform like this with other stakeholders, which includes the public. And to empower the public, we must implement the three C's, communication, collaboration, and coordination. It will be wonderful if we can incorporate the public, the stakeholders into our triple IPCC program, you know, that is, that is fantastic because we need, you know, in order to make things happen, to make things better as what we believe, we need the cooperation from all. The public or the community should be made aware of the benefits of community-based marine and coastal ecosystem conservation and Last traditional minute, okay and traditional biodiversity knowledge which includes social benefits such as community cohesion and participation ecological benefits economic benefits such as community based economies and most of all cultural benefits such as strengthening cultural practices and traditional knowledge safeguard of course we have to have empowerment through education we have to groom our youth starting from a very young age. They will, they will be our ambassador of the environment. They will be the caretaker of the environment. Yeah. So empowerment through public awareness and involvement, we should look into creating more citizen science activities with the public, such as getting school children involved in collecting re reliable data for management and decision making. 
citizen science involves public professional partnerships that allow people of all ages an opportunity to participate in real scientific research. Empowerment through stories. You know, in recent years, in our hectic lifestyle, people are reading less but are more engaged with social media. The media has an important role to play to disseminate the awareness message to the public. The public can remember better about conservation of biodiversity and other issues better through stories, cartoons or comics, and more impactful message if it's been shared through short videos, for example, like YouTube or TikTok, you know, now it's, it's getting more popular. There are many things we still do not know about our vast ocean. You know, these are the, the concern of our youth today. Their voices should be heard in terms of protecting the environment. You know, uh, this is another example of the youth concern. You know, so it lies on our shoulder now. So the journey uh, of educating and creating awareness is a long one and filled with many challenges. It requires commitment and cooperation from all. As a closing remark, I quote the statement from Sir uh, David Edinburgh again. It is surely our responsibility to do everything within our power to create a planet that provides a home, not just for us, but for all life on Earth. As we realize biodiversity predicts uh, current and future human health, we, the public, as well as our governments, must push for greater collective action to conserve the sanctity, biodiversity and beauty of our environment for the future generation to come. Thank you very much for your attention. Back to you, uh, Pak Zaina. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Eileen. I think it's a very inspiring uh, uh, from uh, Professor Eileen talk, right? Uh, so we have passed 45 minutes. We have already listened to Professor Fan Wang on uh, scientific issue and challenge on marine uh, biodiversity. Professor Oki on how to approach this utilization of uh, biodiversity sustainably. Uh, Professor Eileen has been uh, providing the importance of protection of marine biodiversity for the benefit of environment and also the people. So the next 15 minutes, uh, the final 15 minute talk will be on how we taking action of uh, research and at regional level. Professor Re Cheng Yu uh, will give a talk. So he is a professor at Institute of Oceanology, China Academy of Science. He is also assistant director of uh, EOCAS. His expertise in marine ecology and harm, harmful algal bloom. So the next 15 minutes uh, will be yours, uh, Prof uh, Yu. The floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Pakistano. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, yes, yes. Clear. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, just now we have a, a, a three present uh, three presentations about the challenges and also the values of uh, marine biodiversity and the ecosystems in the IPCC region. Are uh, and. I would like to give a talk on the actions we should take uh, to protect the uh, marine biodiversity and also marine ecosystems in this region. We all understand that uh, the uh, climate change uh, has posed significant threats to the sustainability of uh, marine ecosystems and also marine biodiversity. Uh, it was projected that there will be around 1.5 to 2 centigrade <clears throat> between 2030 and 2050s. So this increase of uh, temperature will have significant impacts, uh, particularly on the marine ecosystems in the uh, uh, polar region and also the uh, uh, ecosystems based on coral reefs. Uh, and this is uh, uh, extremely important for, for the IPCC region. Sorry. Uh, as just mentioned, uh, this region uh, is uh, a very important region for the uh, multiple sphere interactions. It's a, a hotspot of marine biodiversity and it's also a region with significant impacts of uh, ocean circulation and the future climate change. So we all understand that the uh, marine ecosystem biodiversity is very rich here in this region. 
and and this is of high value not only for uh, uh, by, uh, marine organisms but also for the potential chemical resources and genetic resources as just uh, introduced by Professor Oki. And we all understand that uh, the future evolution of uh, global warming uh, will have significant impacts on the biodiversity uh, in this region. Uh, because uh, we, we understand that the, the uh, formation of um, bio, marine biodiversity center in this region is closely related to the geological evolution and also the, uh, the, effect, the effects of uh, uh, warm pool. But the future increase of uh, uh, temperature will significantly affect marine ecosystem and biodiversity in, in this region and uh, thus affect the values and services of uh, marine ecosystems. But more than that, in this, region, in this region, most of the countries are developing countries and people are relying on the marine ecosystems to uh, have their food, have their resources and have their working opportunities. So the pollution and uh, uh, other issues uh, together with climate change will significantly affect the health of marine ecosystems in this region and led to many issues uh, like, uh, for example, hamburger blooms, which will uh, have, a, uh, there, there will be another session uh, shortly after our session. But uh, at this stage, we don't have much understanding on the, our uh, uh, we still have a lot of gaps uh, in, in data acquisition, in observation, and in uh, assessment of ecosystem health, and also in the <laughs> understandings of uh, the future evolution trend of marine ecosystems. So all these gaps need to be solved. Uh, but in this region, uh, we have many countries here, so we need a strong international collaboration to improve our understandings on the status and the trend of the marine ecosystems and also marine biodiversity. So that's the reason why we think it's important to uh, put forward an uh, international collaboration program. And I think the uh, UN Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development offer us a very good opportunity for us to carry out this kind of uh, collaboration. It offers a once in a life opportunity, not only for the scientists working on marine science, but also for the other, uh, for the industries and for the students uh, to join this kind of uh, collaboration. So um, in the uh, conference uh, organized in 2019 in Tokyo, we put forward a, a primary idea on the organization of uh, triple IPCC MEB program in this region. And Fortunately, uh, this uh, program was uh, supported by the Westpac uh, and it was listed as a working group uh, in, the, in uh, April this year. And this uh, working group, we hope, will strengthen the regional collaboration and for the development of the future international program. So I would like to give a, 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 a brief introduction about the objectives and also the outcomes of the Triple IPCC MAP program. Uh, the, I'm sorry, the working group. So uh, we hope uh, through the implementation of this working group, as well as this uh, incubator uh, meeting, uh, we hope we could highlight the importance of the understandings on the formation and the evolution mm -hmm. of the biodiversity center in, the, in this IPCC area, and also its social economic impacts. Uh, through the uh, implementation of the working group uh, and the, the discussion in this meeting, we hope to identify the priority issues on marine ecosystem and biodiversity research uh, from the multi-sphere and multidisciplinary perspectives. And this will help us to address a health and resilient ocean. And we also hope to uh, integrate the shared interests of uh, different countries in this country to promote further collaboration and also to improve our capability in observation, you know, forecasting, and the prediction of the marine ecosystem changes. And um, another uh, objective is to uh, help to involve more young professionals in the corporate cooperative studies on the Triple IPCC MAP program. 
And there are many different aspects related to the marine biodiversity and the marine ecosystems in this region. For example, marine ecosystems, marine biodiversity, marine environment, fisheries, the habitat, um, uh, the warming issue, the pollution issue, and uh, also the marine ecological disaster issue like Hamburgo blooms. We need to um, integrate <laughs> all the different parts through observation and modeling and try to uh, develop, them, develop them through uh, integration um, and collaboration, communication and training to have some important outputs. The major outputs could be identify priority issues for future collaboration and on marine ecosystem and biodiversity to promote the development of the a science plan and also uh, probably an implementation plan for the travel IPCC web map program and to improve the awareness of early career ocean professionals to ocean decade and try to break, break the gaps between the science community and also the policymakers. <laughs> so um, it's, I think it's the time for us to develop this, uh, this uh, program and how should we implement the, the plan. Uh, there are several aspects we could work in together. First is the academic exchange. We could organize conferences and seminars to promote the exchange of ideas and progresses uh, on marine ecosystem and biodiversity research in this region. And we could organize joint crises to promote the observation and also the data sharing. And there will be uh, technical trainings uh, for to develop our capability in observation, uh, such like the uh, artificial intelligence and eDNA, the new techniques could be involved in the uh, future collaboration. And also, we could promote the talent exchange through the supporting of uh, young scientists to visit, to visit among different countries to improve the, the joint uh, uh, research. We have developed primarily a coordination structure uh, through the establishment, uh, establishment of a steering group and also a coordination office. So this steering group uh, for the working group, uh, the, its major responsibility is to provide strategic leadership and governance oversight. And the coordination office will help to coordinate the activities and monitor the implementation of this uh, working group. So far, we have uh, invited uh, several professors uh, to uh, uh, for this uh, for this steering group, uh, including Professor Fan Wang, uh, Patino Arifin, and uh, Professor Alin Tan, uh, and also uh, scientists from Indonesia, from Malaysia, and from China are involved in this working group. And we hope to have more scientists from other countries to join our uh, scientific steering. Uh, group to help uh, supervise the, uh, the working group. And also we think there are many uh, different aspects related to this working group, such as uh, climate change issues, uh, carbon neutrality, and observation modeling, marine ecosystem and biodiversity, fishery resources, marine ecological disasters, and marine pollution issues. So uh, we plan to develop uh, different sub-working groups uh, which could involve uh, to uh, have more young scientists get involved into this uh, collaboration working group. To coordinate the, uh, the operation of this working group, we also uh, plan to establish an office for the coordination affairs. Uh, we, we plan to have uh, three different branches from Malaysia, from Indonesia, and also from China to coordinate the uh, different uh, sub-working groups and try to organize the activities uh, within this international program. And that's a primary idea about the uh, design uh, of the Triple IPCC map program, and we hope to have all your attentions and the involvements from uh, the scientists, especially the young scientists. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Professor uh, Renching Yu. Uh, I think uh, this is a kind of, uh, if I may say, 
uh, the IPCC, Indo-Pacific Convergence Center, uh, is uh, a kind of a platform for working at a regional level. So as uh, Professor Van Wang mentioned uh, in the first uh, talk that this uh, work will, uh, this working group will focus on actually multi-layer uh, activities uh, at the level of hydrosphere. So focus on thermal center, uh, atmosphere, issue on advection and lithosphere on plate convergence. And we did a lot of a discussion today on biosphere, yeah? on uh, biodiversity center area. So to uh, move to the next uh, uh, discussion, uh, I transfer uh, from Indonesia to Malaysia, Ibu uh, Prof. Uh, Aileen, to uh, lead this uh, discussion. Uh, please, uh, Prof. Aileen, I send to Malaysia now. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, uh, 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 Pak Zainal, you know, from Indonesia to Malaysia. Earlier on was from China, Indonesia, now, now lastly to Malaysia. Thank you very much. So now we move on to the next session, which is the mini talks. Yeah? We have three speakers that we have uh, invited. Um, um, each speaker will give a very short talk, about five minutes. So we have um, um, enough time for discussion, hopefully. Yeah, so uh, first I would like to invite Dr. Krishan uh, uh, Karunaratini, an earlier career scientist from Wayamba University of Sri Lanka. His expertise is in marine biology, focusing on taxonomic identification and present status of jellyfish resources in the coastal waters of Sri Lanka. Um, Krishnan's talk will be on the role of marine biodata in supporting industry. Um, over to you, uh, Krishnan. Krishan, are you here? Okay, I've just got a message from our uh, TI support team that he has he was here earlier, but he has accidentally left. While waiting for him um, and, and without uh, wasting time, maybe I will invite our second speaker first, yeah? Uh, Dr. Jie Zhang, an associate professor from the Institute of Oceanography, China Academy of Science. Uh, Dr. Jie Jiang's expertise is on seaweed genomics, uh, evolutionary biology and population genetics. Dr. Jie Jiang's talk and title, Philo, Philogeographic Diversification and Postglacial Recolonization Patterns, the case of Sargassum, Sargassum species in the IPCC. Over to you, uh, Dr. Jie Jiang. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I think, uh, I think um, you have to ask those around you to move further away. Okay. <laughs> I think for not speak, uh, we have to turn it off. For yeah, those uh, who are not speaking. Jejang, Jejang, are you are you there, Jejang? Um, your screen is already up uploaded. Is already on on the screen.
Yes, everything okay over there? Yes. Yeah. Hi, Professor Ali. Yes, uh, yes. Can, can you, you see can, the slide? Yeah, I can see the slide, but can you put it? Yes, yes. Thank you. Please. Okay. Good morning, everyone. I'm Jie Zhang from ICARS. It's my great honor to share our recent work with all of you. Our research work focuses on phylogeographic diversification and the post-glacial Uh, Jie Zhang, you're unmute. You accidentally unmute. Uh, the, you, you, sorry, you accidentally mute. Please unmute yourself. Hi. Yes. Can you hear? Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. First, I introduce the background of our research work. Uh, the left figure show the biodiversity hotspots on Earth. The right figures show the global marine species rich. The evidence shows mm -hmm. that IPCC is one of important marine biodiversity centers. Uh, our research work focuses on uh, one important uh, seaweed Sakasama polysystem. The seaweed is a common and dominant seaweed occurring in the subtitle, those of uh, the Indo Pacific region. It belongs to Sakasama genus with some unique characteristics. Uh, the seaweed contains vesicles. Is valley, so it can form floating mass and exhibit stronger floating ability. Besides, vegetative reproduction promotes the seaweed to colonize, colonize and survive in the new habitat. So the seaweeds are ideal models to test biogeographic hypotheses relating to isolation, migration, and diversification. So in so in our uh, work have two main objectives. One is to estimate genetic diversity level of this seaweed. The other is to infer the demographic history and the colonization rules. In our study, we examined two important genetic diversity indices to evaluate the genetic diversity level. The results show that low genetic diversity was revealed at the population level, but Hana Iceland and Bali Iceland have high genetic diversity. Furthermore, we also examine uh, 24, 27 haplotype in all uh, care populations. Uh, this figure show the haplotype distribution. Uh, different color represent different haplotype. Uh, from this tip, uh, figure, we can say Hana Iceland and Bali Iceland have high haplotype diversity. Then we also construct haplotype network and conduct population structure analysis. All these results show that all the kelp populations divided to um, genetic lineages. As we know, glacial refugia is the area where animals and uh, plants could survive during glaciation. Our previous work uh, supported that Hana Iceland and uh, Bali Iceland might be marine refugia for this brown alga. So in this study, we want to investigate post-glacial recognition process. So we designed four evolutionary models to test the recognition rules. The results show that this cap was originated from Hana Iceland, following by southward disposal across the South China Sea to the Gulf of Thailand and the Strait of Malacca. Besides, Bali Iceland population also contributed to the genetic divergence of Malacca Strait populations. Then we want to examine how ocean currents influence the gene flow between different cow populations. The left figures show the ocean current patterns in uh, Indo-Pacific region. The right figure show the uh, uh, gene flow between different populations. All this result showed that the present gene flow was in agreement with the contemporary Indo-Pacific ocean currents. Uh, sorry. Uh, as we know, there are three common response, uh, response to climate change for marine uh, species. One is extinction, migration, and adaption. 
Then our future work will focus two main objectives. One is how climate change influence the distribution of disease. The other is what is the genetic mechanism of adaption under the climate change. Special thanks to our team. And uh, this work was supported by Strategy Priority Research Program of CAS. Thank you for your attention. I think you're unmuted. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jiazhang. Thank you very much for your presentation and keeping to the time. Very good presentation. Uh, uh, now, since Christian is not here, we'll invite the third speaker, Dr. Yong Guan Yuan, uh, Associate Professor from Institute of Oceanography, uh, Chinese Academy of Science. His uh, expertise, yeah, Dr. Uh, Yong Guan Yuan, expertise is on coastal eutrophication and harmful algae blooms. Yeah? His title is Mitigation of Harmful Algae Blooms in China and ASEAN countries, a modified clay approach. Over to you, uh, Dr. Yuan. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for you, Alin. And um, just call me Isaac for your convenience. Okay, um, yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm from you, IOCS. And today I'd like to share a story about the harmful algal blooms control. Well, um, let's start with a short video. So we know that um, the marine and the, the fresh water the algae or phytoplankton sometimes would uh, grow out of control. And this phenomenon we call the harmful algal blooms. It could have several uh, negative impacts to the, uh, to the human health or to the um, co local economies, such as the um, agriculture and to the biodiversity. Well, it's a, a global ecological disaster, but more important, it has been a regional challenge in the IPCC area or in the um, Asian countries. For example, um, the herbs uh, caused by the crocodilium uh, often induced some cultural fish mortality. And here is a case in the Malaysia last year along the coast of Penang. So the herbs is a disaster just like a fire. So to a fire, we have to do something and have something in our hand. We call it the fire extinguisher, or let's say some emergency control strategies. So in theory, there are several um, approaches could be used to treat herbs. For example, we could use ultrasonic or some physical measures, but you know, the herbs in the field is often dozens hundreds or even thousands of square kilometers. So it could not be used in the open sea, this, this kind of method. And people used to, to spray some uh, chemicals like copper or algaecide into the field to treat herbs, but it could induce the second pollution to the environment. So this kind of uh, approaches has been uh, prohibited. And people used to use some biological uh, methods, but it's the uh, effects is very slow. So it could not be used in field by now. In China, we use a, a technology called the modified clay. So this, um, it, the, the clay, uh, no, the cells would be flocculated by the clay particles and sailed down to the bottom. And it is very quick. And this method has been used along China coast since 20, uh, 2005. It's a very promising technology. Uh, the advantage of it initially um, is very effective to flocculate the herb cells. Well, after uh, spray this uh, MC into the field, the, uh, the water become clean in many, maybe minutes or hours. And in the microscope view, the clay, uh, the clay will flocculate the cells and settle them down them to uh, the bottom. And this action maybe it takes only one hour or less than one hour. But this direct flocculations, maybe 70 to 80% of the cells would be flocculated to the bottom. And for the lucky residue cells in the water, well, and they will, uh, and, uh, they will uh, just uh, the growth of, of them will be, uh, will be inhibited by the I'm additions. Some of the progress is very fast, and some maybe a little 
relatively slow, but destined. And by uh, the, the growth of the, uh, the cells will, will be inhibited by the MC addition. So the HAPs could be controlled in the field. And the efficiency of this method uh, is, very, uh, is very okay. And the dosage we use in the field is only four to 10 times per square kilometers is very low. And secondly, it's a very green technologies. Well, uh, the cells at the bottom, uh, for to, to the cells at the bottom, the degradation of itself would be prevented by the MC additions. So benefit is the carbon burial. And it's a, uh, it's, uh, the nutrients in the water could uh, absorb, absorb. So the water quality could be improved. It is totally harmless to typical um, to agriculture organisms like fish, shrimps, et cetera. It could, it could decline the toxins in the water and inhibit uh, the seeds or maybe seeds of some specific species and uh, could adjust the community structure, thus optimize the ecosystem totally. And this material was further evaluated by several third parties, and it is indicated that no harm to the uh, organism and to the environment. We also developed several types of the equipment that could be used to spray this, uh, this material in field. Some of them could be used in the cultural ponds, and some of them is fit for to be used uh, in the open waters. Uh, in addition, this method is not only used in China, but also be introduced worldwide. For example, it be, has been uh, demonstrated in the USA, in the Florida, so against the Florida um, well, perhaps there. And such uh, uh, collaborations on the dispersal of this method was just uh, uh, financed by NOAA and others. And we also introduced this method to Peru. And such collaborations were supported by different stakeholders like the National Congress of Peru, NGOs and some cultural companies there. So can we use this, um, is this uh, method could be used uh, potentially in the Asian countries? The answer is yes, I think. This method is viewed by Princess Shirin Chong in <clears throat> Bangkok to 2018 yeah, during the gas exploitation. And it is, it is uh, viewed by several officers from Indonesia, Burma, and etc. By now, this method, we are working with the Singapore Food Agency, SFA, and to develop the protocols on how to use this method in Singapore in the Joho uh, Strait. So here we go, uh, the summaries. So, so many have some disasters and should be treated as special disasters. And uh, people, uh, including the public authorities and the um, agriculture industries, they want some levels of HEPs control. So is there any strategies to control HEPs? The answer is yes. There are promising bloom control strategies in use in some countries, maybe not in your country, but in some countries outside. So one of which is the curry disposal. In this uh, area, MC, the modified clay, is widely used in, the, in China. It's a promising, uh, promising technology and has the potential to be widely uh, introduced in Asian countries. So here is my talk. Thanks for your attention. I'm Isaac, and I could be reached by this address. Thank you, thank you, Isaac, uh, for your um, you know impressive presentation. You know, I'm sure there will be some questions for you later. Um, yeah. Let's let's move on. You know, we have we have found uh, Dr. Christian. You know, I think he's here with us already. So again, I'll introduce Dr. Christian, uh, an earlier career scientist from. Wayamba University of Sri Lanka. His expertise is in marine biology, focus on taxonomy identification and present status of jellyfish resources in the coastal waters of Sri Lanka. His talk will be on the role of marine biodata in supporting industry. Over to you, Krishan. Welcome back. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Professor Eileen. Yes. So there was a small... Uh... Technical issue, so I couldn't uh, participate uh, on time. Okay. Do you have slides to share? 
Yes. Yes, please. Okay, we see your slides now. You just need to put it into a um, uh, slideshow. Yes. Yes, uh, Christian, you can start. Okay. Yes. Okay, yeah. Uh... The topic uh, is uh, the role of marine biota uh, of uh, Indo-Pacific in supporting industries. Your slides is not moving, uh, yeah, Krishan. Um, I don't know what's going on. Uh, uh, now it's okay. 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 Right. Uh, the plants and animals of uh, a particular region is called a biota. Uh, the marine organisms, economically called as uh, blue biomass, uh, are pelagic or benthic. Uh, there are about uh, 5 million uh, species in the oceans, but so far, most of them have not been classified. Uh, and these oceans are really important to the well being of. Uh, life uh, and economics. Uh, marine biota of Indo Pacific is significant because uh, it is the biodiversity hotspot in the world. Uh, the coral triangle is also located here. Uh, and there are several types of ecosystems like uh, estuaries, uh, shoal masses, uh, mangrove forests, and open and deep sea oceans. Uh, a range of organisms dwells uh, in these ecosystems, such as bacteria, fungi, other microorganisms, cyanobacteria, micro and microalgae, uh, sponges, mollusks, other invertebrates, fish, and uh, plants are called as marine bioresources or uh, blue resources. Uh, the sustainable use of those uh, blue resources for economic growth, uh, improved livelihood, and jobs while pro preserving the uh, health of the oceans refers to uh, blue economy. Uh, as you know, uh, the Indo Pacific region is very popular for uh, the several industries uh, such as fishing uh, industry, aquarium industry, and tourism. Uh, also, various ma marine resources harvested from this region are important to produce uh, feed for livestock, uh, for fertilizers, uh, pesticides, and weedicides. Uh, the building materials and uh, cement additives are also produced by using inverted braids. The biotechnology uh, that utilizes molecules and substances of marine origin refers to the blue biotechnology. The growth uh, of uh, blue economy in the Indo-Pacific region could be enhanced on the transformation of marine bioresources into food, medicine, uh, animal feed, and rated bio-based uh, items. The blue biotechnology uh, can be applied for mariculture and uh, highly valuable various products can uh, also be produced. Uh, incorporated uh, services such as ecosystem uh, management, both fundamental and applied research, and uh, bioremediation card for uh, sustainable utilization of the marine bioresources. Uh, the blue biotechnology is uh, essential for the development of the pharmaceutical and cosmetic industries. 
uh, various kind of uh, therapeutic drugs are produced from marine bioresources by using uh, blue biotechnology. Perspectives of the blue economy of the in the Pacific should be upon the uh, development of processing and preservation techniques of marine bioresources. Also, the products should be exposed to global markets and uh, exploration of marine environment uh, for untapped or underutilized bioresources is also essential. Uh, there is an example from Sri Lanka. There was uh, no comprehensive study on jellyfish resource in Sri Lankan waters. Thus, we uh, carried out a survey. Uh, Krishan, of Krishan, time, another one, another one minute. Uh, we obtained uh, which were uh, important biology, uh, fisheries, uh, toxinology, some other applied sciences. Uh, based on our findings, some other Sri Lankan researchers were able to extract some uh, important substance from jellyfish uh, for the first time from Sri Lanka. Uh, by the presentation, I wanted to tell that exploring marine uh, bioresources and applying blue biotechnology for them uh, will expand the industries and the economy of the Indo-Pacific nations. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you, Christian. Thank you for your for 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 keeping to time, and and uh, okay. Let's let's move. Let's all of us move to the discussion. I would like to invite all the speakers and uh, uh back on stage to us answer the Q and A session. All right, the discussion session. Um, there is a few questions. There are a few questions in the chat box. That I will read up. Some of it has been answered, and some of it has not been answered. Let's uh, uh, address the first question been posted. Oh, oh, uh, been posted on the chat box by Arif Rajman uh, regarding the warming and possible migration of many organisms towards colder region, northward or southward. Could we predict that kind of movement, where the marine Organisms from tropical region were took refuge under continuous warming ocean. And I remember the case of tropicalization due to migration of tropical species from around Indonesia to coastal region of Australia is an ongoing problem and threat to their marine diversity. Um, can I invite Professor Fang uh, to address this issue, this question, Professor? Okay, thank you, uh, Ellen. And uh, I, yeah, I, I, I have uh, dropped some words uh, at the discu uh, discussion uh, chart chart panel. And uh, yes, this is very important uh, question, which is the, one of the issue of the uh, tribal IPCC MEB. Uh, and uh, I, I do think uh, in the future. Uh, if we want to address this question, we need to uh, organize some basic investigation with uh, better coverage, not only in the coastal or, or, or the surface uh, sea, but also some uh, uh, offshore area and uh, at sub subsurface, intermediate or deep layer uh, sampling. And uh, also we should uh, follow the, uh, the international standards to, so we can combine the uh, data and the uh, sample uh, analysis results uh, together uh, with uh, from the different uh, channel or sources, uh, resources. And also, I do think that the, our uh, traditional method of uh, sampling and analysis can hardly fill the, fill the, uh, the gap of a sampling, the, the uh, spatial and temporal uh, sampling. So maybe we need is uh, we need use some new uh, method, uh, su uh, such as uh, the environmental DNA. We can use the water sample sample to recognize or identify the the uh, species. Uh, 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 instead of uh, we can have to uh, to to use net or multi layer uh, uh, net, which cannot give us enough uh, sample. And also we can use the artificial uh, intelligence analysis method uh, to, uh, to, 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 
give uh, help us to establish the the relationship between physical, chemical, and biological or ecological parameters. Uh, this is and also if we want to uh, project the future trend of the biodiversity pattern in within and and the outside of our region, we. We, we, we definitely need to develop a, a, a proper uh, coupled model to give us a, a much more reasonable scenario of the future uh, environment change. Uh, that's my, yeah, preliminary, I have this uh, uh, thought. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Professor Wang. You know, let's, let's move on. Uh, is there any questions from the floor themselves? If you have questions, please, Raise your hand and, and unmute yourself to ask the question. Okay. Um, so while waiting for you to raise your hand, I will go in back to the chat box. There's one for Isaac. Even though it has been answered, I think it would be good uh, for Isaac to share it with, with the, the, the crowd. The question is, could you explain a bit on the chemical components of the modified clay? Is it just clay or is it mixed with other chemical compounds? So it flocculate easier or can kill or stop phytoplankton growth. Um, Isaac, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that concern. Yeah. So the uh, main components of the modified clay is just the natural clay. So Isaac, you, 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 we could not hear you clearly. Can you go nearer to the mic? Yeah, yeah, I'm coming. So is it much better? Yes, much better. Thank you. Okay, so the main components of the modified clay is the natural clay. So it is very green and environmental friendly technologies. And we just uh, modified the surface and to improve the removal efficiency of the clay and to the, uh, the, the help cells. And uh, for your concern about the basic organisms, uh, initially, and the dosage we use in open waters is extremely low, which is only four gram per meter, a square meter. That uh, it is equal to, we just spray a sugar bag of a coffee in mm -hmm. onto the surface of uh, uh, one, uh, uh, one, uh, uh, one square meter. So it is very extremely low. So the turbidity, we didn't see the turbidity changes in open waters because of the water exchange. And, uh, but uh, for, for a careful, uh, for a careful for reason, reason. But also, but also test the potential impact of the multi-clay. Multi uh, young Wei, uh, can you please off your mic? Yeah. Sorry, sorry, okay. sorry, sorry. Young Wei, can you unmute yourself? Okay, back to you, Isaac. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Uh, no problem. Yeah, uh, so uh, let, let's back home. And, and to the basic organisms, we also test the potential impacts of this method to the basic. The simple answer is no. There is no uh, uh, obvious uh, changes of the, uh, of the control group and the MC addition group. So uh, all in all, it is very green and uh, environmental friendly approach to mitigate or to treat crabs in field. And uh, 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 is, it, is it cheap uh, compared <laughs> to other 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 <laughs> tools? Well, yeah. Thanks, uh, thank you, uh, Professor Wang. Yeah, you know this method has been widely used along China coast. We treat we control herbs in hundreds uh, square kilometers or thousand square kilometers. So the the cost or it, it could be accepted. I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, my own curiosity. Um, this modified clay is is designed to actually capture the HAB. Uh, mm -hmm. What my question is: What if the HAB happens in a mollus farm, and the mollus is filter feeders and they need the, the 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 algae to feed? Does it, does the clay also absorb? other plankton also in the area if you were to put in the clay in a mollusk culture farm? Um, initially, and the mechanisms, mm -hmm. this method controlling herbs is the flocculation between the clay particles 
and it's a hep cells. So it could flocculate these hep cells and settle down them to the bottoms. Yes, and to your uh, own concern. And so I, uh, I wish to share a, a story we used in uh, shrimp culture ponds. We spray this uh, material onto the surface of a shrimp culture ponds. And the shrimps may potentially, you, you know, to, to, to eat these uh, clay particles or all the flocculants. And do you know the, uh, do you know, uh, uh, the results? And the shrimps grow much bigger and the taste is much better than before. <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, um, uh, is, you know, that they are eat, actually in a way eating also the HAP also, right? Yeah. Okay, I have, you know, I, I don't see any burning questions in the chat. I have one question for, for Professor Wang or, or, or uh, Renjeng, uh, Renjeng Yu to, to address, you know, this, this uh, triple, I, uh, I triple, tri uh, triple PCC, we are just initiating. A lot of, I see a lot of interested participants and audience here that we can actually invite them to join. Um, the burning question that they have is uh, fundings, you know, fundings. If there's, there is opportunity for training, for joining the excursion and, 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 and training uh, and, and workshops, you know, and, and also learning how to do the research together. But uh, most of us would like to know uh, what is your directions in terms of sustaining this, this this program in terms of funding. Yeah, over to you, uh, Prof. Uh, thank you, Erin. Uh, I, I think the international program uh, uh, can uh, play a role as an uh, umbrella or platform uh, 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 where we can, we can uh, apply the funding from our own uh, national funding agency for for for, for the members uh, activity um, uh, and uh, meanwhile the IOCAS uh, have already get some initial uh, fund which can used to, to can be used to, uh, to to organize some seminar uh, and the training course and the uh, young scientist uh, uh, exchange uh, in the in couple of years, and uh, based on this, and uh, I, I I think we can uh, design a very good uh, uh, implementation plan, including uh, the field experiment and uh, uh, and 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 the inter uh, internal uh, experiment. So um, yes, we. Uh, uh, the membership who has the member uh, uh, institution uh, who has a uh, uh, research vessel, okay, we can uh, we can organize some joint uh, crews, and but uh, uh, but with uh, their own funding and for the partner uh, uh, for the partner institutions without research vessel, uh, or we can. Uh, invite the scientists on board our research vessel uh, or not, even on board or no, we can share all data and uh, and and the samples, and yeah. and and do some uh, joint research and uh, jointly submit or and publish our uh, papers. I, I think that's that's wonderful. You know, thank you for enlightening us with some some positive notes. On, on, on how we can move this, this program. I would like to suggest to Renjeng Yu, can you please kindly put um, the secretary email onto the chat box? So I'm sure uh, there will be more uh, interested parties that is going to contact contact uh, uh, the main secretary of this program. Okay, uh, Renjeng Yu or, 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 or Lin, can you please type your whoever contact number? So those who is interested to join or to participate in this program can actually email to, to our team, all right? 
um, uh, for those who are interested, please look, look at the, the, the check box for the email address that you can write to, to show your interest. So I think time is not on our side. I will pass it back to Professor Fang Wang for, for your closing remarks. Thank you very much, everyone, uh, for participating and, 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 and uh, be part of the program. Thank you very much. Back to you, uh, Prof Fang Wang. Thank, Thank you, Erin. And uh, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe. Thank you. And um, uh, I, I just uh, reading the uh, the message at the chat room to me, uh, but maybe I can uh, answer the question uh, uh, later. Uh, okay, the dear friends and colleagues, uh, we are very close to the end of this meeting. I believe uh, the, uh, uh, the our meeting is a great success. We have already, uh, uh, listened uh, to four invited talks uh, from senior scientists and three mini talks from young scientists. And all presentation were uh, very uh, informative and uh, discussion, uh, even not uh, time enough, but uh, it's very, very uh, uh, I, I think, uh, it's fruitful and uh, constructive. Uh, on behalf of all members of our organizing committee. I want to thank Professor Zena and Erin for hosting the meeting and uh, sincerely appreciate uh, the all participants of the uh, incubator eight today to engage in developing the knowledge of uh, marine biodiversity in this area and funding, finding the solutions based on our joint uh, effort. And you can uh, say from uh, Renchen Yu's talk, there's many vacancy of, uh, uh, of the, our working group, uh, not only the, uh, the uh, committee uh, membership, uh, but also the, uh, the, the leaders and members of uh, the sub working group. So if you have uh, uh, interest uh, and we welcome the, the, the people, the scientists, uh, to join us. And, but we have to deal with the balances between of the uh, genders, uh, the uh, countries, and the disciplinary. So we, we, we want uh, our group, community, to be uh, uh, very comprehensive and uh, uh, with more uh, countries and more, uh, more institutions and more the uh, female scientists uh, get in. And, uh, uh, and uh, so at last, I would appreciate again for your support and participation uh, and uh, look forward, we can work together to promote the, the not only science, but also our society and economy to uh, groove uh, healthily. Thank you very much. Okay, and uh, yeah, it's just uh, on time and uh, look forward to meet you uh, again, not only online, but also in person in near future. And I uh, hope you all our friend and your family stay safe and keep health. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank everyone. You. Stay thank safe. You. Okay, yeah. Bye -bye. No, need to, to have, no need to have picture anymore, eh? <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Already? <laughs> Already. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye now. Bye.